Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Doctoy on your own Hetzner server so you can install and manage any kind of web apps easily. Let's get started. So we're going to start by going to our Hetzner dashboard. Now, if you do not already have a Hetzner account, you can sign up with the link in the description below and get $20 of free credits to use. All right. So let's go and create a server. Click here. Now here you're going to choose the location for our server. So depending on if you're going to host applications that are for uh, users or applications they're going to use yourself, you want to choose a location that's either close to your users or close to yourself. So in this case, we're going to choose Europe and Ubuntu here is fine. And the type of CPUs here, we're not, we're not going to use dedicated CPUs because we're not going to use that much uh, CPU power. So a shared CPU works well. Let's take this Intel AMD architecture and let's choose this one here, four gigabytes, four, 40 gigabytes of RAM. This works well. Let's go down here and go to SSH key. In order to securely log into our server, we're going to need to create an SSH key. So we can do that by opening up our terminal and do SSH egen D for the algorithm. We're going to choose ED25519, which is a popular and good algorithm. And then the file name, we're going to save it in home.ssh. And let's call it uh, docploy, docploy key. No passphrase, so just press enter, enter again. That's it, all right? Now we can, let's take the public key that we're going to add here. We do cat ssh docploy dot pub. So it's the same key name, but add pub added at the end. This will give us our public key. All right, so that's my public key. Take it from here, copy, press add SSH key. I'm going to add it here and uh, yeah, just leave it as so. Set this as the default key as well. We can set this as default key for the whole server. So I'm going to do that. Why not? Add SSH key. All right. Now let's go down. I already have a firewall set up. You can set up your own firewall or I don't have it set up, but you can choose it here. I have a firewall already for uh, other servers that I can reuse here. Or you can set up your own firewall. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Uh, now let's go down here. And here you can set the name for the server. So I'm just gonna call it docploy. So I can identify it with, between my other servers. And uh, yeah, that's it. Now we can just gonna create it. Create and buy. All right, now that the server is created, we're gonna log in via SSH to our server. So open up a terminal and do SSH root. And then we'll take this IP address here. Just press enter. Okay, it said failed. I should have written yes. Okay, let's do that again. Now do yes, confirm here. Great, and now you can see that we're logged in as root. Now, working with root is kind of risky, so we're gonna create a normal user to work with. So the first step is to add user and give it a username. I'm just gonna do user. Now, give him a password. Like so, just enter, enter. You can fill in this if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it empty. Is the information correct? Yes. All right, so now I've created a user. Next step is to give the user pseudo privileges, which is root privileges. So we're going to do user mod a g pseudo and then the username. So I called them user, so I'm just going to write user. And that's it. All right, now that we created our user, the next step is to log in with the user. In order to do that, we're going to need to set up an SSH key for the user. And an easy way to do that is just copy the SSH key from the root user. And we can do that with this command. Take this command here. And if you named your user something else than user, then change user to the username you're using. I'm going to press enter. Now I've copied the SSH key. Now I'm going to exit the session. I logged out and I'm gonna SSH with the new user, which I named user at 159 IP address 82115.
And now we logged in with the new user. All right, so now it's time to actually install Docploy. So let's go over to the website and here installation. And here we got this command that we can run. Open up the terminal again and run this command. Okay, it says the script must run as root. So let's try to sudo. And it still didn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna try to log in with the root user directly instead. So I'm gonna SSH root. All right, clear the screen. And now we're gonna try the command again. Oh, great, so now we got Docploy installed and it's time to try it out. So let's follow this link here open up this one and you can see now that it is run over http we do not have ssl installed yet so for that reason i'm just gonna add a uh, temporary password that we're gonna change later after we have set up ssl and security all right so let's give it a an email address i'm just gonna make something up user email.com and uh, password just temporary password that we're going to change later and register uh no never save all right so now we're inside our dashboard uh so the first thing we want to do is add a domain so we can connect with a domain instead of the ip address so in order to uh, point a domain to our server I'm going to go to my domain registrar. In my case, it's Namecheap. Now, if you have another domain registrar, just go to the look for the DNS settings and it's going to be similar. So I'm press go to advanced DNS here. And now I'm going to add an A record, add a new record, A record. For the host, I'll just do an at sign. Might also leave it empty. And now the IP address, we're going to take that IP address of our server. You can find this here or in Hetzner. So I'm just going to take it from here, go back here, paste it in, and save. All right, now let's go back to Docploy. And in Docploy now, we go to Settings, and we add our domain, the same domain. In my case, it's digispruce.com. And let's encrypt email. I don't have no, let's encrypt email. I don't think I need one. And certificate let's encrypt default let's do this default let's encrypt save an email is required okay let's try the same email user um was it email.com for my my case save all right domain assigned now let's try it out okay does not work yet Okay, so let's try add some new records here. Let's add one, with only the IP address. All right, let's star like so. Wildcard and uh, let's add a WWE as well. All right, now let's ping this address and see that it actually connected to our domain. Ping digispruce.com. Yes, it should be. It's the same IP there. Do not, yes, it is. All right. Let's go back to Docploy now. Uh, settings, look at settings. Looks good. All right, let's try it again. And now it works. All right. So I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe we need to add this wildcard part or the WW3W part. But anyway, it works now. So try adding the wildcard. Otherwise, if it doesn't work and see. All right. So now we're here again. And you see that we have HTTPS working. So the connection is secure. Now we can log in and securely change our password. Okay, now let's log in. Do user email.com which was the email i registered with 
and add my uh, temporary password. Log in. Now we're logged in. Now we can go to settings here. And we can we should be able to change our password. Let's see here. Profile password. So now you can just enter your new password here, whatever it might be. Save. Log out. Try a new password. And that's it. Now you change your password. And now you have HTTPS and everything working. So uh, now we can just get started installing web apps. So uh, let's try with the WordPress app, for example. So now to install an app, we go to create project. Let's call it uh, WP. Create. Uh, create service. Application, no, template. We're going to choose template here because we got a lot of applications to choose from and install automatically. So we have WordPress here. Press on create. Yes, confirm. All right. Let's go into WordPress and press deploy. All right, let's go to deployments. No, domains. And here we will get a temporary domain. So let's open this up. That's it. We have a WordPress website working. Now let's try and add a, a domain to our WordPress website. So I'm going to go to my Namecheap account. And you can see now that I've removed the other records. They weren't really necessary. Maybe we just need to wait a little bit more time to get it worked. So now let's add a new record here for our subdomain. And for the host, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it uh this is going to be the subdomain so i'm going to call it site and then we copy the ip address and now we save both so this means now that we're going to access our wordpress website on site.digispoos.com so let's go back here to docploy i'm going to update this one here those going to be right digispruce.com and uh, we're going to leave the path as is container port we're going to do automatically provision SSL certificate make sure not to choose let's encrypt it leave it as none because otherwise there might be some bugs all right now let's update this domain updated great and let's go back to where's now let's go to general stop when, whenever you make a change in the domain settings you're gonna have to redeploy it and now we deploy it again yes now let's wait for it to deploy all right now let's just open this up and see if it works advanced acceptors can continue and now it works for some reason the SSL doesn't work yet. Uh, should work. Let's have a look at that. Automatically, HTTPS, yes. So it should work. Definitely should work. Let's try again. Site.digispruce.com. Upgrade it to HTTPS. Remove exception. All right. So now it works. We just had to wait a little bit. And even if we try with HTTP, we should get redirected to the HTTPS. So let's do HTTP. And we get redirected to HTTPS. So now we have a WordPress website, which HTTPS and everything is working. So... Uh, hope you find this video valuable if you did please subscribe and like to support the channel and i hope to see another video take care